let's see how to protect a security center itself. What is offered in security center to protect against unauthorized intrusion? The default way of authenticating user is via password. So this is the first vector of attack. There are multiple way of strengthening passwords. The first step is to set the password policy so that user uh, needs to respect a specific password composition. Let's see how to do this one. So if you go in the config tool, then in system general settings, in the user password settings, uh, you will have the ability to configure the minimum password composition. So you can choose what makes the most sense for your organization. That's when, when you save, uh, once you save them, if you were to create a new user, for example, the password that they will have to use, well, we'll have to respect that password composition, right? So if I were to put, for example, the same character A, 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 A all the time, the it, it will not work. And we discussed the password strength meter a little, but uh, what, I, what it does is basically give you an, a note, one to five, uh, if your password, the password that you've chosen is good or not, and give you contextualized hints about what to do to improve it. So in this case, well, it's don't use the AAAA, uh, you know, string uh, everywhere. Uh, this is a pretty bad idea. Now I just bang on my keyboard, use uh, some uh, stronger password, and the uh, strength meter is indicating a very strong uh, password. Okay, so this is all uh, good. Now, how to keep uh, hackers out? Um, there is a brute force protection mechanism that uh, I discussed last time, last week. Let's see it in action. So say I want to impersonate the admin, but I don't know the password, right? So I can try to guess the password uh, until I hopefully find it. So after 10 tries, the specific user will be locked out for 30 seconds. Uh, this is what we are shown here. So if I were to try with the real password this time, well, uh, it wouldn't work, right? I still have 12 seconds to go. If I were to use another user, however, I'm not locked. So it's really locked only for a specific user. Let's go back to the slides. To go uh, one step further, we can also use multi-factor authentication. This can be done using an external identity provider, such as Active Directory or ADFS. The idea here is that Security Center will delegate the identification of the user to another entity, and this entity can use whatever is necessary to authenticate the user. This can be a second factor, for example. So here, uh, we have a demo of a specific username that needs to enter his passwords, and then uh, he will receive, uh, whoops, I, I misclicked, sorry. Uh, and then uh, he will receive uh, a notification on his phone, and clicking approve uh, will uh, grant him access to the system. Now, I will gloss this over quickly, but in the, server admin, there is also a unique protection mechanism that is worth talking about. It is called the local machine only. This, what it does basically is that it restricts uh, this web page, the, the server admin ones, to the local machine where it is executing. So if you don't need to expose those uh, sensitive control to the outside world, uh, that is a good option to, uh, to enable. Once a user is authenticated, we need to decide what he is allowed to do. The least privilege principle states that we should uh, give the least amount of privilege to a user to do his job. This is to reduce the impacts if the user uh, becomes malicious, right? Uh, in Security Center, you can really apply this principle because uh, it offers over 380 
privileges, so really a, a, a big a big number of privilege. This can become overwhelming. So the way it is managed is basically that you can uh, put user in groups and manage their privilege at the group level. This allows to scale. That's what we see here, for example, that uh, investigator A uh, is under the security operators uh, group. So he will inherit all of the same privileges of this group. Of course, this can be customized per user, uh, but it, it is not necessary. So it gives you a lot of control while allowing uh, scalability. Uh, the next thing uh, that needs to be done once users are authenticated and authorized is to track what is happening on the system. For this, security centers offers two mechanisms, activity trails and audit trails. Activity trails is a type of uh, maintenance task that reports on the user activity related to video access control and LPR. This task can provide uh, information such as who played back the video recording and uh, much more. Uh, so you need to generate a report uh, to do this, and both trails can be accessed uh, that can be accessed via different reports. And you can also use the plots the the plus to visualize those reports in a more uh, efficient and user friendly manner. The audit trail is a type of maintenance task that reports on the configuration change of the selected entities in the system and also indicates the user who made the changes. It's great to have so much data and devices, but how can you keep uh, everything secure if you don't keep things in check? We mentioned it last week, uh, keeping a complete inventory of all assets is essential. You need to know uh, what you have. So in order to do this, uh, you can use the uh, inventory report. The inventory report will uh, display every device uh, that you have in your system. So uh, this can be accessed at the top. Uh, at, 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 the, at the top here. So let me show you uh, directly uh, in my uh, config tool. So it can be accessed either at the top here, or you can also uh, get it uh, get it as a as a task as a, as a normal task, right? So. Um, you need to generate your report and then you get a list of all the devices that are in your system. You can get a lot of information and for cybersecurity, uh, you have, for example, the firmware version that is used, is an assessment about the strength uh, of the passwords and so on and so forth, if it uses a, a HTTPS or not. So it's really a good place uh, of a good way of getting a, a quick overview uh, of your system uh, and you can also uh, use the, uh, the the display the the, the pies and charts uh, here as well so uh, where to go next uh, basically uh, this was just an overview uh, that of what can be done from a cybersecurity perspective on the system those items that we just discussed were mostly taken out from the Security Center Hardening Guide. This is a document detailing all the steps uh, that, we, that we did today, but many others as well. One useful thing we did is to incorporate uh, automated cybersecurity checks for those items in Security Center. So it is a, a, a good place to, to go, this, uh, this checklist, uh, to get an overview of your security posture uh, and and to discover what can be done in a specific system to improve it. So how to access it? Basically, this is accessible via the, the health uh, dashboard. Then you have a security score widget. If you click on it, you get uh, all those items I was referring to. And you have your score at the top, which is basically how many items you comply 
uh, compared to uh, to what uh, Genitex recommend. So enforce a strong user password policy, for example. That's the one I just checked uh, in in this demo in, in what I just I just did like two minutes ago.